2023 thankfully blessed us with some fantastic opportunities to travel and during the year we took four cruise holidays two were with Morella and two were with P&O and previously we've compared our experiences on P&O Azura and Morella Discovery both of those cruises taken in the first few months of the year four weeks apart now this video looks at our more recent trips on P&O Arcadia and Morella Explorer both of these trips taken in the autumn six weeks apart as before, we'll consider only the experiences on the ships themselves. We're not going to bother with any aspects of the itineraries. We just found it interesting in to seek out the differences between the experiences you get on the two cruise lines. We'll score aspects of the cruise experience and re-examine where their strengths are and where there are areas for improvement. Morella nudged it by half a point on the previous video, but who will come out on top this time? Keep watching this video to find out. So before we crack on, let's just talk about the two ships themselves. P&L Arcadia, built in 2005, 84,000 tonnes, caters for 2,084 passengers. It's an adults-only cruise ship and is said by P&O to offer a more classical cruise experience and it's a pretty firm favourite with the P&O community. Morella Explorer, on the other hand, originally built for celebrity cruises in 1995. Uh, it's a comparable size. Uh, 77,000 tonnes, 1,924 passengers, refit by Morella in 2018, and it has become a real firm favourite of the Morella community, and it's a, pretty much marketed as a new-to-cruise type experience. I also think we need to state at the outset of this video that on both of these cruises, well, both the ships were sailing at full capacity. Anyway, now let's look at our first category, pre-cruise planning. Now, both cruise lines provide an online web portal that allows you to enter advanced passenger information, like passport details, and you can also book excursions and speciality dining and things like that. Both the portals allow the printing of boarding passes for the ship and luggage taggers for your suitcases. And on our first video, Morella's cruise control portal failed spectacularly at the beginning of the year. Yeah, and, and it was a real letdown. It really didn't work at all. But in this latest cruise, the Morella Cruise Control Portal worked brilliantly. In fact, everything worked as it should. In contrast, P&O's My P&O Portal worked as well this time as it did earlier in the year. It's nice that there's some consistency there. And one nice feature of P&O is that you get these regular countdown to your holiday emails, prompting you to log in and see what you can do and what the onboard experience is like. Now, for some, they might be just more unwanted emails, but for us, it kind of added to the holiday build-up and excitement. So in this first category, we're going to give P&O five points and Morella four and a half points. And in our next category, we're going to talk about embarkation and disembarkation. And thankfully, embarkation was really easy on both cruises. The P&O cruise was from Southampton, and it was exceptionally easy to board the ship. The muster drill was via watching your uh, a video in your room and then reporting to a muster station with your cruise card. So somebody could just click it to say that you've done it and you knew where your muster station was. Morella's cruise was a fly cruise to Corfu. Transfers were organised and check-in was pretty seamless and really, really easy. And the muster drill was done exactly the same way as on the P&O ship. So all good, right? No difference between them. Well, there was a big difference in disembarkation. Strangely, P&O requested that passengers uh, put their suitcases outside their cabins 4pm the day before departure. Now, we thought that was pretty early. And on the Morella cruise, well, they also request you put your suitcases outside your room, but that wasn't until midnight the day before departure. We thought that the P&O protocol was pretty ridiculous, really. And, and on, they did do a self-checkout option, of course, where you could take your own cases off the ship, but that might not be suitable for everybody with multiple cases or with some mobility needs, for example. Other than that, the disembarkation process were pretty similar with passengers being called to collect cases from the cruise terminal at preset times, depending on either your flight time or the deck in case of uh, the P&O cruise. So we felt that the P&O disembarkation was not as good as Morella's and we're going to give Morella four points and P&O two and a half points. So in this next category, we're going to talk about ships facilities. Now, both ships are fairly small and of a generation before today's mega cruise ships with all the modern facilities like water slides and stuff. Okay, but both ships were pretty well provided for. Both have pretty good sports court areas and the theatres were really well presented also. Both ships had a really generous number of bars and cafes. If you had to split hairs, 
it did feel like there was a greater choice on piano Arcadia. Also, the pub on piano Arcadia worked a lot better in our opinion. So the Rising Sun pub on Arcadia was a really good venue with live music quizzes. It also showed live sport, which was really excellent. The Squid and Anchor pub on the Red Explorer is, is great and there's lots of entertainment there, but there's no sports offering at all there. And that's something that you don't get on any Morella cruise. If you also had to split hairs, you would also say that the nightclubs on the two ships were also a key differential. The Globe nightclub on PL Arcadia was really, really a whole heap of fun and worked really well as an independent venue. The Indigo nightclub bar on Morella Explorer, well, it was a combined bar nightclub and it just didn't work as well in our opinion. Another difference between the two ships is the swimming pools. Arcadia has two heated pools, one of them indoors, one of them outdoors. They were great. Morella Explorers, both of the pools on Morella Explorer were outdoors and both were unheated. One nice thing about Explorer, which we really did like, was its crazy golf course. It was a whole heap of fun. Arcadia really didn't cut the mustard in that area with its golf driving nets, but you know, it was good fun at any rate. Sun lounging areas were comparable on both ships and there was ample deck. De you know, deck space to put your lounges out and just chill and relax. One brilliant feature of the PL Arcadia was its promenade deck, which provided a complete circuit of the ship. That was lovely, you could do the Arcadia Mile. Explorer doesn't have that, it does have a running track, but it's much smaller, less extensive, and it gets quite crowded and busy. Both ships have deck game areas with sort of like uh, coits and table tennis areas and things like that. They were quite good fun. And both ships have pretty good spas also. I have to say that the spa on Arcadia we felt was better because it had a lovely spa pool and a thermal suite too. And we also really liked the relaxation area where you could just go and chill and relax and help yourself to free tea and coffee. Both ships had gymnasiums. These were pretty good actually and they were generally well equipped. Uh, there are dedicated areas set aside for enrichment activities like at classes and things too. They, they, were, they were there available on both ships. Um, Arcadia had a bigger library area than Explorer, that's another difference. Another difference again is that Arcadia had a much more extensive casino area which was much better equipped. I think if you were going to compare the two you probably have to say that the facilities on Arcadia were better. It provided a bigger and more diverse range of facilities than on Morella Explorer. So in this category we're going to score PO Arcadia 4 points and Morella Explorer 2 points. So this next category is a fairly big one, it's food and drink. And I think for fairness, once again, we need to exclude the speciality dining options on both ships. Both ships provide some fantastic speciality dining options, really, really exquisite. So let's deal with the complementary dining options on both ships in turn. And we'll start with main dining room options. Now, main dining rooms are elegant settings on both ships, to be fair, but we felt that the layout and the airiness of the main dining room on Morella Explorer, well, it just made it feel a little bit more extravagant. Food options available in the main dining rooms on both ships seem to be kind of variations of what you would get in the buffet with a few extra dishes thrown onto the menu. Food quality, though, was where the big differences were. The food on Explorer we felt was a notch above what we got on the Arcadia. And that was in terms of taste, quality of ingredients and also presentation. And we were really surprised at that given our experience earlier in the year on Azura. We felt that the main dining room experiences on Arcadia, well, they were somewhat ordinary. They were fine, but ordinary. Now to buffet areas. And quite simply, Arcadia's buffet just didn't work well at all. And there was a real shortage of seating. And that even forced some passengers to eat in other areas with their food and taking the food from the buffet out into the swimming pool area, for example. It just didn't work well at all. Again, food quality was also an issue in the buffet on Arcadia. And again, it was pretty bland in flavours, poor quality ingredients. It just really, really wasn't as good as what we'd expected. On Morella Explorer, well, the buffet also got busy, but you were always able to get a seat, so that was a good start. Food selections were varied, there was enough choice, but food quality was where they had up their game over our previous cruise earlier in the year, and the food was simply delicious. We really, really enjoyed the food on Explorer this year. In fact, it was some of the tastiest food we've ever had on a cruise from a buffet. It was really, really good. Snack shacks and burger bar options are also an important aspect of a cruise. 
doubly important on Arcadia because if you didn't want to dress up for the main dining room and you couldn't get a seat in the buffet, often you were forced to go and try the burger bar. Now the burgers were fine, there wasn't a great selection and choice available, although we did like the burger of the day option, that was quite a nice touch. But you know, it was pretty limited and pretty restricted, but the food was fine when it was served up. We did feel the choice and range of what you got from a Morel Explorer snack shack was significantly better. They did fish and chips, for example, chicken wings, but they also did a range of healthier options too. Sandwiches, salads, fruit pots, and of course those tasty, tasty cookies. And we also felt in terms of taste and quality, this was another area where Explorer wins. Generally, the food was a lot better on Explorer. So now let's turn to drinks. Now, Morella holidays offer an all-inclusive holiday experience, and this means a really plentiful supply of drinks throughout the whole holiday. Cocktails on the all-inclusive drinks menu were generally pretty good. However, we did experience a shortage of some of the drinks due to unavailability of ingredients. Similarly, draft ciders were not available throughout the entire cruise. It seemed they'd run out of these on the previous cruise and had not had an opportunity to restock. So that was a pretty, that was a big disappointment actually. Actually, I do fancy a cider from time to time. Drinks on Arcadia, on the other hand, were pretty faultless in terms of selection, availability, and quality. And we liked the theme cocktails too. However, you know, a lack of water fountains on the ship is a detracting feature that we also encountered on Azura also, and we think that this is something that P&O should definitely look at. They were available, there were two available on the promenade date, but that's about it. Similarly, there weren't many places to get a free cup of tea or a free coffee, mainly in the in the buffet area or in the relaxation room. And we definitely think that, you know, if you don't want to go to the bar all the time and you just want a free cup of tea or something like that, you know, is included in your fare, you think you should be able to readily access that. So overall then, if you take into account the drinks, but also the food and the food quality on Arcadia being poor, we felt that definitely dragged the scores down. So p and only get two points, whereas we think that the food and drink on Explorer get four points. And our next category is entertainment. And entertainment is largely a personal taste, but a good house band or a specific show, well, that can make all the difference to your cruise experience. On our cruises earlier in the year, p and entertainment was largely based around live music and far less around Broadway-style shows, whereas Broadway-style shows have always been a real staple element of Morella's entertainment programme. Now, this time, Morella continued to excel with its amazing shows five nights of the week in the main theatre, each different, each so well performed by some very, very talented performers, Morella set a very high standard in this area, but I think it's also worth pointing out that the house bands and the other musicians and the other entertainers, well, they were also of a really good standard on Morella Explorer. Every venue on the Explorer felt like fun on every night of the cruise. It was great. Pleasingly, Piano, on the other hand, had appeared to really up their game significantly, particularly with the headliner theatre group that was putting on some incredible shows in the main theatre. Now, these shows weren't as numerous as on Morella, but they were really well delivered to a really good standard. Also, the Arcadia had a really good house band too, and that also helped lift the spirits of the passengers. And there were other musicians and performers around the ship. You know, it, this time around, it felt like p had got a much better balance of for its entertainment programme. It was really good to be able to say that. Now, it's really hard to choose between the two different entertainment offerings, but to be honest, if we had to split hairs, it would come down to everybody's favourite, the silent disco. Now, Morella stays this in the Indigo nightclub on Explorer with two competing DJs trying to win you over to their channel. It's a whole heap of fun. On Piano Arcadia, well, this was done differently. For a start, it was held in the indoor swimming pool area and there was only a single DJ playing three different channels, which he then handed over control to specific passengers. And this meant that the music that was played was aimed at the few and not the many. So if we are gonna split hairs on the entertainment offering, which was good on both ships, we're probably gonna give the edge to Morella and give it five points with p &O, four points. So this next category is ship's atmosphere. And this was another category where Morella trumped earlier in the year. Morella are consistent in their offering, which is really focuses on having fun. And all staff participate in this, even up to the captain and the senior crew, and they managed to get themselves on stage and were also being sort of lauding praise on their own crew, but also having a laugh and a joke with the passengers. It was good fun. 
crew are friendly and helpful and smiling all the time and you hear laughter and banter between them. This lifts the mood on board and combined with Marilla's programme of in-your-face entertainment led by the very visible cruise director, well, it makes the ship a fun place to be. And it really, really was. Quizzes abound, music everywhere, cookery demonstrations. The entertainment team really work hard to engage with the passengers. There's a more relaxed dress code too, which many passengers we spoke to clearly welcome. The dress to impress nights were well adhered to in our view, but it just seemed more comfortable without having a strictly enforced dress code to adhere to. And we think Morella get this right. Now, to be honest, we were a little worried about what to expect on an adults only P&O ship, given our experience on Azura earlier in the year. But we needn't have worried, to be fair. The ship had a really great working crew. Room stewards and bar staff were hilarious fun and ready to engage in chat and banter and lift your day. And this was a notable improvement in our early experience on Azura. Although occasionally we did detect an undercurrent of strict paymasters perhaps reining in the fun that the crew could have on Arcadia. The captain and the senior crew, however, were much less visible and much more distant than the equivalents on Marilla Explorer. And this was a shame, but of course they do have an important job, so you've got to understand that. P&O dress code policies are often controversial and again, in our opinion, were a detracting feature. Now, to give an example of this, on Halloween, the entertainment team and staff were trying to encourage passengers to dress up in fancy dress for the Halloween party in the evening. But on the day of Halloween itself, they announced that normal strict dress codes would apply in the dining rooms that evening. And that meant that if you had dressed up for Halloween, you'd then have to remove your costume for dining and then put it back on again for the Halloween party. Now, that's quite simply ridiculous, but they were enforcing it and we couldn't believe that. It's a great example of P&O's obsession with the dress code spoiling everybody's fun. Now, dressing up smart and putting on your tux and your ball gown can be fun, and we enjoy doing that occasionally too. But we do think that P&O really have missed the point with this. Now, one further point that we would mention is that the P&O cruise director was again largely absent. We couldn't tell you their name or describe what they looked like. However, on both Morella cruises that we've taken this year, we can remember both cruise directors clearly they were such good communicators and helped make our cruise so much more fun. So Morella's continued emphasis on fun gets five points in our opinion, with an improved P&O getting three points. So in this next category, we're gonna talk about cabins. And we booked inside cabins on both cruise ships. And there wasn't too much to choose between the two cabins, to be honest. Both were pretty spacious, with adequate storage space, had comfy beds, both had small screen TVs and tea and coffee making facilities, perfectly adequate. A plus for p &O was the single three pin British plug socket, that was great. However, the bathroom on Morella Explorer, well, that was significantly better in our opinion. For starters, the plumbing worked much better and was less prone to breaking down. The shower was also more spacious and fitted with a shower screen rather than the dreaded shower curtain, avoiding those flooding mishaps we've all experienced occasionally. Morella also still do a turn down service in the evening with towel animals and complimentary chocolates. We still love this to be fair. Come on P&O, bring that back. So scores then are Morella four points and P&O two points. We would have scored P&O three points, but we did have quite a few problems with the plumbing in our cabin, which kind of leads us to our next category. And this next category is customer service. And you generally only contact customer services when there are problems or you need information. On Morella Explorer, we had very few, if any, problems, and our engagements with customer services were around finding out things like about how to disembark and how to use the sports course and crazy golf. The one problem we did have in our cabin was reported and quickly fixed, and it was, you know, really, really efficient service by the team there, and they made sure that we were happy with the work that they did to fix our problem. Staff were really friendly on the desk, really polite, really helpful, can't really fault them. P&L Arcadia's reception seemed a lot busier than the reception on Morella. The ship, although newer than the Explorer, well, it did seem to be having a few more technical problems and a few more mechanical breakdowns. And staff on reception were polite, but reporting problems was often not enough to get them resolved. And often we had to visit the reception desk two to three times over a day to get things like toilets to flush. It's not the fault of the customer services team, we will point out but you could sense their frustration about having to front these ongoing mechanical and maintenance problems. 
So that kind of detracted from our overall experience with the customer services team. So we're going to score Mira four points and we're going to score PO two points. So for many, this next category is the most important category. We're going to talk about costs. So, okay, given everything we've discussed so far, cost is still one of the most important factors that most people consider when choosing a cruise holiday. And previously, we indicated that we felt the costs were comparable when you took into account Morella's all-inclusive drinks package. And this received a lot of feedback from viewers of our previous video who had clearly managed to book some amazing bargains with P&O or had felt the impact of price rises on Morella. And to be fair, these were our experiences too on these last two cruises that we took in the second half of 2023. And looking at it on a price per person per night basis, and including the drinks bill, the Morella Explorer cruise cost us £178 per person per night. That's everything in, including drinks. It did include a flight, I would add. But P&O Arcadia's cruise cost us just £75 per person per night on the early saver cruise fare, and a further £24 per person per night for the drinks. And that meant that this cruise was under £100 per person per night. We should add there were no flights in this cruise price, however. But even so, we do feel that's a massive saving over the Morella cost, and that cannot be ignored. But to get this deal on p and we had to take the early saver cruise fare, and that meant we couldn't select our cabin, and of course we had to book it well in advance. But we did end up with a really good cabin, and we had a really good onboard experience for a significantly lower cost than the cruise on Morella. We do feel Morella have inflated their costs since earlier in the year, and there are far fewer bargain fares to be had on the Morella website. They have been incredibly successful as a cruise line for first timers, but have also gained a loyal following as a result. We think P&O are now well and truly in the budget cruise line market with this aggressive pricing. And we should point out that the prices for our exact P&O cruise did inflate as we got closer to the sale date. And we did meet some passengers on that cruise that were paying in excess of £200 per person per night without the drinks. But they did get some very generous onboard spending credit. So we can only score this on our own experience. And on the basis of what we paid, we're going to score Morella three points, but P&O five points. So now we come to the overall scores and we have P&O Arcadia scoring 29.5 points and Morella Explorer scoring 34.5 points. So we have Morella Explorer as a clear winner. And this was quite a surprise to us, to be honest, when we first notched up the scores. But the Morella scores were consistent with our previous review earlier in the year, if in fact just a notch better. Their offering is focused on fun and entertainment and Morella Explorer really delivered this. And it was pleasing to see the improvements in the food offerings too. But you have to say there is a price premium for this experience. And that is a notable feature of this second comparison. p had up their game, notably in terms of improving the ship's atmosphere and also in the quality of the entertainment on offer. This was really, really good to see. The ship's facilities are better on Arcadia and the value for money that they offer is simply incredible and we should not lose sight of that. But the food offerings just didn't cut it and there was no comparison. And add to that the frequency of plumbing problems on the Arcadia and p continued strictness around the dress code and the silliness that went with it, well, it just took the edge off the bargain, in our opinion. Arcadia is a more modern and better specified and equipped ship than Explorer, and the battle of the ratings between the two should have been a one-sided affair, but Morella continued to show what can be achieved with a happy and well-motivated crew. P&O are firmly in the budget cruise line market based on our two experiences in 2023. They do try and hide this behind dress codes and cruising traditions. Despite all of that, you have to say P&O is a great value cruise holiday, but it is a value cruise holiday, especially if you can book it at the right time with their early saver rates. Now, we love sailing on both lines and we've got more adventures planned with them in 2024. What we would say that if you did find this video useful and you'd like to see some more content like this, we'd really appreciate it if you'd hit the like button. And if you really, really like to see more content like this, why not subscribe to our channel too? Lastly, if you've got any comments about the content of this video, please let us know. Stick them in the comments box below. 
Have we been fair? Or have we missed something that would have made a difference to our review? Please tell us. Thanks again for getting this far, and we hope you'll join us on our next adventure. Please like and subscribe.